Uh, I was born on Rauken. Uh, that was our Ngarindjeri name for the place. Uh, the white man called it Pont Maclay. Uh, was raised there till we got about nine or ten years old, and it was an idea what. I think the white man put in our parents' heads and then our parents really believed it was their idea to go from our Aboriginal settlement to live in the white world. So that was a that was one hell of a mistake. Because when once we done that our family fell to pieces. Uh, alcohol, I suppose but finally killed my father in the end. Our family sort of disintegrated. Uh, we finished up in boys' homes, me and my brothers. Uh, my sisters was in girls' homes. So the family spl was split. The traditional way we used to live was on, you know, on, this, on this Aboriginal settlement. It, see, the Aboriginal settlement was made into an Aboriginal reserve, you know, but this, we were always there. The Ngarindjeri people were there, the, the white sort of government system built a reserve around us. You know, so. And uh, like the, I remember the times we'd be, you know, our grandparents, our parents would be taking us out fishing and hunting, and, you know. And uh, Raukin to me was a paradise. You know, it was my paradise when I was a kid, you know. So. There was work on the, on that settlement, I suppose, for, for our parents and that. But uh, a lot of ways, my father would go out hunting, you know, and bringing in, bringing in feed for us anyway. You know? My grandparents would take us out camping, you know, and just going back to our traditional country where we lived on the Kurang. When I say that the Rakan was like my paradise, and then, then I'd, on there they had these white superintendents who'd come in, you know. And uh, the white superintendent, they'd come in with different ideas on their heads and different rules and regulations. And I seen that paradise change from, from one beautiful place into more like a concentration camp, you know, where they built a, a grey wall around the place, you know, cut down all the big gum trees, all the, all the native trees and that, you know. And they really destroyed the place. Yeah. I don't know why they why they done it to make it look like a place that we didn't want to be in. You know, like uh, maybe if they made it like that, maybe that would be enough to say, ah, oh, you don't want to get out of this place. You know, maybe that that was their reason for doing it. You know? mm. So. Well, a lot of times it's it's, it's really hard to understand the way the white men think. You know, we thought about caring for each other, helping each other, you know. But with the, with the coming of the white men, that, that changes, you know, it changes every, everyone. Because a lot of people now start thinking the way the white man thinks, you know. And that's, a lot of that is just greed, you know. Greed and destruction. You know? So, but uh, people survive on that way. White people survive that way. You know? They they like to put different names to it, but you know, just the, the common names of greed and destruction. You know, they like to fancy it up, pretty it up a bit, with a you know, make it sound like it's some other sort of name. Uh, what can you call it? Mining, or something like that. You know? Uh, you know, and you, you you see the destruction they done on on the land with, with through mining. You know? you know, you could you could mine and you could take what you want. You know, take what you what you need. But, you know, but this 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 need and greed is is two different things. You know? So you could after all it becomes greed. You know? So you. You taking it and then because you want it, you know, because never mind you got millions of dollars because you just want more. You know? So 
when the Aboriginal people, like, and this is not just my people, we just took what we needed for food and, you know. At one stage, I, I remember the water down, the, the, the freshwater lake where we come from was, was so clear, you could see the fish in the water, you know. And you could see the, the, the food in there, what, would you, what you was going to catch, you know. These days you got, to, you know, you can't see about six inches in front of you, you know, if you're, when you're under the water. You know? so it's that polluted. You know? Aboriginal people believe that the land is the mother, it's Mother Earth. You, know? you come from the Mother Earth, when you die, you go back to the Mother Earth. You, know? you could get food from Mother Earth. You know? But if you rape Mother Earth, then you get nothing. You know? If you if, by raping what I say by that, by raping Mother Earth where, where you're making uh, you're making profit out of the earth by mining, by farming, by whatever. You know? So all you're doing is just raping it. Raping Mother Earth and then you're gonna finish up with nothing. Because I couldn't have raped so many, somebody so many times and still believe that they're still going to provide for you. So this, uh, this is a foolish way and a foolish belief. You know, people that, people that, you know, raping the land that much now that they don't care about their grandchildren. You know? They don't care what's left for their grandchildren. They don't care if there's anything left for them. How could, how could someone think that way? You know, I'm, I'm living here for today. I just want what I want, you know? Nothing, I'm not worried about my grandkids. Are they going to mine all this uranium? No. You know, to tell you the truth, I don't know what the white man thinks. You know? I don't, I don't... You know, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm probably glad I don't think like a white man. You know? I think when he looks around and sees the land, and you just see dollar signs, I think. No. It's all what you can get out of the land. No. What can I get out of this? No. I don't know. Maybe when I'm finished with it, then I might give it back to the Aborigines. No. When I took everything out of it, I'll give it back to them. No. I'm just wondering if the white man will ever learn. You know? Do they want to learn? You know, it, they can learn a lot from my people, but they can learn a lot from a lot of indigenous people, but do they want to learn? It seems like it's the white man's way or the highway. You know? So, so it's a... Uh, That's my sort of question back to you, I suppose, is do they want to learn? You know? Do they want to learn how to get on with their fellow man? You know? Do they want to learn how to come together? Because you know? uh, if they don't want to learn that, then it's just the golden rule. You, know, you learn how to get on with people. You know? and treat people the way that you like to be treated. Simple, you know? And that way you'll find that you'll get on with everybody. Yeah. There's no... You don't have to be an Einstein to work that one out, you know? You don't have to be a rocket scientist to work that one, uh, to work that out. You know?
You just be, you just treat people the way that you like to be treated. Yeah. And that's, uh, I think it's just a simple golden rule. Yeah.